Welcome back to Fantasy Central by the Horsemen, presented by Rising Sun Global Media. This is your host, Zach, a.k.a. The Oracle, because I'm like that fit, that psychic chick in the Matrix when it comes to football. And of course, I'm here with the fantasy guru himself, Hefe. What's up, fantasy footballers? How are we doing today? Well, I hope they're all good. I know I'm not. I got quite a bit to pick up on the wire this week. I don't know who to start and sit, but that's okay, because you're here to tell tell me what to do now, aren't you? That's right. So today we're going to talk week eight fantasy football. If you need help with your team or you just need reassurances that you're making the right moves, stick with us today. And as we go over the top week eight waiver claims, players you need to start, who to absolutely avoid playing. Uh, I would like to say that if you guys have any questions, need some help with your roster, shoot us a message or drop a comment on Facebook at Horseman Sports. We'd love to hear from you and we'll help you out the best we can. Uh, also, before we get started, we'd like to ask you if you head over to our YouTube channel, if you're not already there, hit that subscribe button for us. Once we hit 1,000 subscribers, we're giving away a free, authentic NFL jersey from the NFL shop, player of your choice, to one lucky fan as a token of appreciation for your support. We started the Horsemen back in the offseason as a fun project, and we all thoroughly enjoy talking football with you guys every day. So a quick subscribe to our channel goes a very long way, and we really appreciate the support. You guys are awesome. So let's get to it. Week eight waiver wire. I know you have a big list this week. So let's start with the running backs. Who are you looking at taking on the wire this week? So we know we we know that Chris Carson got a little banged up in the uh, Arizona game on Sunday night. So you need to be looking at getting Carlos Hyde. And he also came out of that game with uh, his own little hamstring injury. Uh, so, you, you know, he he's more day to day where Carson's week to week. But it's expected that Carlos Hyde should be ready to go. Um, Have him on the waivers. Giovanni Bernard, he's picked up in, I think, uh, 49.5% of leagues. So almost 50% of leagues on the dot. And uh, if he's available in your league and Joe Mixon has to sit out again this week, he needs to be picked up. Um, Probably should be on a league anyway. He gets a lot of the passing work in that backfield. So I like Giovanni Bernard here. Also, Jamichael Hasty. Uh, he he's the San Francisco expected backup. You know, they they played him after Jeff Wilson Jr. went down, but Jarek McKinnon is expected to be the starter. Kyle Shanahan said that he didn't play McKinnon much this last game because they were up in the game, and, and McKinnon is uh, dealing with his own little rib injury. Uh, so we wanted to give him a little bit of rest in the last game, but he's expected to get a heavy workload this week. But Jermichael Hasty, you know, with the injuries happening to the 49ers, Hasty seems like a guy that probably should be picked up with, I think, two or three running backs on the IR for the Niners. Uh, also, Zach Moss. Devin Singletary for the Bills just hasn't been getting it done. And their running game, uh, they, they have to change something. You know, they, they haven't been able to get it going outside of Josh Allen. So I, I expect them to start leaning on Zach Moss a little more. Um, you know, I have Devin Singletary on, in a couple of leagues, and I'm honestly thinking about dropping him this week for Zach Moss. I might push it off another week or two to see what happens. But uh, Zach Moss looks pretty good when he gets in the game. So I would expect him to take that job pretty soon. Uh, and the last running back here on waivers is going to be Wayne Gallman. Uh, I know the Giants' offensive line isn't good. That you know the whole team isn't really amazing. But Devontae Freeman got hurt, and I think Wayne Gallman is going to be the lead back there while he's out. He looked decent against Philly. I think put up 16.4 against Philly. Uh, so Wayne Gallman, if if he's available and you really need somebody to put into the running back two or your flex while these buys are going on and all these injuries, then Wayne Gallman might not be a bad option for this week. Yeah, it's a pretty solid list. I, I'm I'm kind of apprehensible on Carlos Hyde because he's playing that Niners defense, and that Niners run game defense is just pretty stout. So I'm a little apprehensive on the Hyde one, but if you're in need, I could see see you having to reach and take him. Uh, Giovanni Bernard, I mean, he should already be picked up in your league. If he's not, definitely pick him up. Uh, Hasty is pretty interesting because – I don't know how I feel about McKinnon coming back. Is he going to be healthy? Are they going to split the reps? Uh, I do know I was looking at the projections, which don't ever really go off projections, but Hasty's projected to do pretty well this coming week. So if you're definitely needing him back, he's definitely somebody who should be getting touches, if, even if he is splitting it with McKinnon. Uh, Zach Moss, I agree with you. Definitely been doing a lot better than Singletary. 
and Wayne Gallman. I don't know how I feel about that one because that Giants offense just can't get shit going. Uh, but if you need a running back, you gotta you gotta take them and you gotta hope they get some points. You never know. So, all right, let's move on to wide receivers. Who you got on the waiver wire this week? All right, so this week it's going to be Scotty Miller leading everybody off. Uh, Chris Godwin just had surgery on a finger that he uh, fractured in in a game on Sunday. So he's going to be out for sure one week. And we know Antonio Brown's going to be in the lineup come week nine. And if Godwin and Brown are both back, Scotty Miller's going to be irrelevant. And good going down the line of the season – Scotty Miller will end up being irrelevant, but this week he should be the number two, and we've seen Brady likes to go to him. So Scotty Miller should be picked up and played in probably every league this week. Um, Also, you're looking at Cole Beasley coming off a big game. John Brown has been in and out of the lineup, and and they got got to find something on offense. You know, the teams are starting to double cover and triple cover Stephon Diggs, and Cole Beasley – took complete advantage of that and you know there were no touchdowns thrown by Josh Allen so you know that that was a little tough and and kind of fluky you know 300 yards no touchdowns you would expect uh, Cole Beasley has another 10 catch game he's going to have a touchdown or two and and Josh Allen likes going to him so I I like Cole Beasley he he probably should be picked up and, and it seems like he's been more valuable than John Brown this year also Brandon Ayuk he had a, a good game a few weeks back when Devo Samuel wasn't in the lineup yet. And and ever since Devo came back, it's been kind of iffy production, right? Not really playing him. But Devo looks like he's going to be out again. So Brandon Ayuk is, is going to be the guy. It's him and Kittle are the pass catchers right now. And so Brandon Ayuk probably going to be at least a weekly flex play until Devo can come back. And then we have Rashard Higgins. OBJ got hurt, obviously, he tore his ACL. And Rashard Higgins came into that game after OBJ went out and was the leading receiver for the Browns um, on a day where Baker, you know, threw five uh, touchdowns. So, you know, big day for him. And and hopefully he can continue it, you know, be the number one or number two, however they're going to do that. But but they like him in that building, and I think they're going to keep using him. He's somebody that should probably be rostered. He's probably going to take a lot of those OBJ snaps. And then uh, the last receiver I have here is Marquez Calloway, guy that not a whole lot of people were thinking about coming into this past weekend, but uh, he had a good game for the Saints. You know, they didn't have Michael Thomas again, and they were out Emmanuel Sanders because of the COVID-19 protocols. And and there's no telling if they're going to have either of those guys back this upcoming week. Uh, you know, we'll have to monitor that. But Marcus Callaway didn't look bad. You know, he, he took the job as number one and he took complete advantage of the situation. And so maybe he carved out a bigger role. You know, maybe not a waiver wire ad. Maybe you just put him on the watch list to see what the Saints do with him in the coming weeks. But somebody definitely watch. For yeah, absolutely. And, and the good thing about Callaway is that he has Drew Brees as his quarterback. And any given week, I know Drew is getting old. He's towards the end of his career. But any given week, that man could throw for 500 yards and five touchdowns. You just never know. Uh, so if Emmanuel Sanders is out again and if Michael Thomas isn't back, I would definitely pick him up. You never know. He can explode, have a huge game. Uh, same thing with Rashad Higgins with Odell Beckham Jr. being out. Uh, and then Scotty Miller should definitely already be picked up in your league. If he's not, pick him up because him and Brady, they go off every single week, it seems like. And Cole Beasley, another good pickup. I picked him up last week and a plug and play for my team against Jeff, even though Jeff got lucky, only beat me by four points. <laughs> Cole Beasley was a big reason why I scored 50 more points than I was projected to score. So I agree with that. I think he's definitely going to step up and play more consistently. I also have John Brown on that team. He's been in and out. I think he's only had two great weeks so far. Uh, So I would definitely take Cole Beasley as your number two for the Bills there. Uh, Let's move on to tight ends. Got any tight ends on the wire this week? Yeah, so the first one, it's two guys. I I don't know which one you really go with here, uh, but we know that that Austin Hooper is probably not going to be playing this upcoming week. So you're either going to want to look at and take Harrison Bryant or David Njoku. And Harrison Bryant came in, and he only had four catches, uh, but two of them were for touchdowns, so he had a big game. David Njoku also came away with a touchdown in this game. 
So, you know, it's a, it's a pick your poison kind of thing. And it's probably a, only going to be a one week thing. You know, Austin Hooper had to have surgery for appendicitis and he's doubtful right now. It's not even guaranteed so far that he's out. He's just probably not going to be here, but, but Harrison Bryant looked good and a lot of people are high on him. So I think that's going to be the guy to target. Um, but also Richard Rogers, apparently Dallas Goddard isn't going to be ready to come off the IR until at least week nine or week 10. And, and obviously Zach Ertz, he's going to be on the IR until I believe week nine also um, at the least, you know, there, there's a possibility he, he takes an extra couple weeks, but Richard Rogers right now is the guy in Philly from the tight end position. And, and so he's going to get some use. He might not be, you know, a, a top five play every week, but he's somebody that should get consistent points over the next couple weeks. Uh, so if you're struggling and you need to find some extra points somewhere, that's a guy I like. Yeah, for sure. And we've talked about this before. It may have been last week, but uh, Carson Wentz loves his tight ends. So I have Richard Rodgers as my number one tight end on the wire as well. So if he's available, you need a tight end, pick him up, play him this week. He will get you some points. So, all right. Anybody else you have left on the wire this week? Yeah, the last guy I want to throw on here, I don't think you should play him this week because you want to see what a rookie does in his first game. But we have two at Tonga by Loa starting in his first game with the Dolphins this weekend. And and it should be exciting, something to, to keep an eye on. I'm sure there are people all over the place that have already snagged him up over, over the last week and a half or so. Uh, but Tua obviously is a very interesting option and somebody that I wouldn't mind having on my bench. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how he plays. Honestly, I think they should have stuck with Fitzmagic. He's been playing well. This Dolphin team's on the rise. But – I understand you have a very talented, talented rookie that needs to get in there and get some experience for the future. So I can understand why they're doing that. But he should definitely get get some playing time. Obviously, he's starting this week, but I think in the next few games, as he settles in, he'll get better. He'll put up the points. May even become one of the league's top quarterbacks in the next couple of years. You never know. So, all right, let's move on to starters. People, you have to play this week. Who you got? So we, we've already talked about Carlos Hyde a little bit. And, and like you said, there's a little bit of skepticism there because of his own injury. But this is a guy that in the past has had a couple of 1,000-yard seasons. So if he takes over and he takes a work workhorse kind of role in this game, um, like you said, even though it's against San Francisco, maybe he has a good game. Maybe he gets more pass production because they're really slim at the run, running back position. So it, pretty much anything coming out of the backfield is going to be his. Also, Giovanni Bernard. Now, Giovanni Bernard is only going to be a starter if Mixon is ruled out. Right now, uh, I believe it's questionable. You're going to have to pay attention. I, I think he's expected to play, which is unfortunate because I, I have – Bernard in one of my leagues picked him up and but you know Mixon I, I think Mixon's going to be back this week so you have to monitor that but if he's ruled out Mixon or Bernard is going to be an automatic start also Todd Gurley they play the Panthers this week and after K1 Short went out for the Panthers with a season-ending injury their run defense has been the one thing that that is really crippling them you know I think that's really the only reason they lost to the Saints they just couldn't stop Kamara or Latavius Murray they couldn't get off the field because of it um, so I, I like Todd Gurley here he's had two touchdowns in a couple games this year he, and he's not doing explosive things that he was doing in LA uh, a couple years ago but he should have a nice week here against the Panthers also Jarek McKinnon and like you said there is some skepticism there uh, but I expect him to be the workhorse if he can go and Kyle Shanahan's usually pretty transparent about these kinds of things, and he said he's going to get McKinnon a lot of touches. So I expect McKinnon to have a pretty good week. San Francisco, it doesn't matter who the running back is for San Francisco. Uh, they, they always have a good day, so you got to start him. And this next one, it's got to be either one or two guys. If, if Miles Sanders plays, I like the matchup, you start him. If he doesn't play, I like the matchup, you start Boston Scott. Whichever one of these running backs – is is starting here I want them starting in my lineup even though I'm not generally uh, a Philly running back kind of guy this week I like I said which not both of them don't play both of them but whichever one starts that's the guy to play and the last guy here the the last starter that I have is going to be Josh Jacobs 
Now, I know it, it's probably weird that, that he's here. Like, of course I'm starting. He's Josh Jacobs. But he's had a couple of down weeks. So if you were thinking about not playing him, this isn't the week. They have a good matchup. He should feast. So the, this is a week that I like Josh Jacobs to have a good bounce back game. Leave him in your lineup. But there are a couple of big name guys that I think are going to have to sit. Okay. And, and this first one, this first one's going to hurt a lot of people. A lot of people really like this guy, but the Cowboys offense is just not getting it done right now. So oh, whoa, have, whoa. are you about to say what I think you're about to say? I, I got to say it. Zeke. Oh. Zeke is not eating right now, and he's not going to eat in this game. The Cowboys – I mean, the whole Cowboys offensive line is backups right now. This isn't the last year's offensive line or two years ago. They don't have Travis, Travis Frederick. You know, Tyron Smith is out for the year. Zach Martin's not in right now. It, it, Connor Williams is out. They, they've lost everybody. Leo Collins, literally all five are gone. Um, it's, it's just – it's been a problem, whether, whether it's the pass game or the run game for the Cowboys. So – I do not like Zeke here, probably for the foreseeable future. They got to get some of those linemen back before I feel comfortable about Zeke again. Um, and also James Conner, you know, they they play the Ravens, and we know how good the Ravens' defense is, and they just got Yannick Ngakwe, and he's had a little bit of time through the bye week to get accustomed to to what they want to do, you go through the playbook, see what the Ravens are going to do. So I expect him to, to play a decent amount here. And, and I just think they're going to be able to bottle James Conner up a lot in this game. You know, I think this is going to be more of a game uh, for Juju, you know, but uh, this is going to be a defensive battle. I don't really expect a whole lot from either offense. So James Conner, sit him. And then David Montgomery, they play the Saints this week. And we know that the Saints defense, ever since they got Marcus Davenport, the run defense has been really stout. You know, he, he as soon as he came back in the lineup, it really just kind of changed the way that defensive front uh, was getting things done. And David Montgomery just isn't just isn't a guy. You know, everybody hoped he would be. He's gotten plenty of workload, and he just doesn't have the breakout games that everybody's waiting for, you know. And and so he's somebody that right now would only be a flex play for me, like if I absolutely needed it. But I'm not comfortable playing David Montgomery from week to week right now. Yeah, I have to agree with you on all three of those. Uh, you brought up a great point with Zeke. He's not eating. Uh, they don't have an offensive line. Their offense is super stagnant. Only put, I mean, Washington's defense is pretty good, uh, but they only put up three points. And granted that Andy Dalton got knocked out early, but you're absolutely right about that. So if you have Zeke, it'll be tough, but Hefe might be onto something with that one. Uh, and then James Conner, I anticipate that game to be super low scoring. Both defenses are ridiculously good. So don't expect a whole lot of offense from either side there. And David Montgomery, I'm, I haven't been high on him at all since he came in the league. The Bears offense, although they're, what, 5-2 and two now, uh, they still don't put up a significant amount of points. Thus, Montgomery doesn't put up a significant amount of points either. So, All right, so who you got sitting on the receivers? So this week, the, the people that I want to sit for receivers – um, you know, I, we just mentioned Zeke and how that offense isn't getting it going. Um, so C.D. Lamb is going to be another guy. You know, you're probably still sitting, starting Amari Cooper, right, because he's Amari Cooper and he's going to get a lot of the targets. But C.D. Lamb is a guy that a lot of people were starting because he was the number two receiver in a very pass-heavy offense. But, you know, they're, they're about to be playing with third-string, seventh-round pick quarterback. Uh, there's – no chance I'm starting C.D. Lamb in this game. And, and for the same reason that I'm sitting James Conner, I want to sit Chase Claypool. Um, like I said, I think it's going to be more of a juju kind of game. Uh, you know, the, the Ravens are really good on the outside. They have a really good outside corner, starting with Marcus Peters. And, and Chase Claypool, obviously, lines up on the outside. Juju lines up in, in the slot. Jimmy Smith has gotten a little bit older. And slowed down a little bit. So I think Juju's going to be able to take advantage of Jimmy Smith on a couple plays. Um, so I think he's going to be more of the target in this game than Claypool. Um, so I want to sit Claypool here. And then Kenny Galladay. As good as Kenny Galladay is, you know, I'm, I I pretty much tell you guys every week, he, he's got to be a starter. He's got to be a starter, whether it's here in Fantasy Central or on a regular podcast. I, I try to mention Kenny Galladay as much as I can because he's got to be the most slept on top 10 receiver in the league. I mean, the dude just week in, week out performs. 
And, and so it's tough for me to put him here. But against this Colts defense, I just – I don't like it, man. They, the Colts are getting Darius Leonard back, and that the pass rush is crazy there. And I just – I think that defense is is really going to step up this week. You know, they, they've had two kind of rough games and then had a bye week to, to fix it and get healthy and get everything right. Um, so I think Kenny Galladay is going to be a tough play this week. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the C.D. Lamb, Chase Claypool, absolutely agree with you for the same reason that – Zeke and James Conner are going to be out with the addition that the Cowboys are going to be having a third string quarterback starting. Uh, and Kenny Galladay, as much as it pains me because I have him on one of my fantasy teams, I'm a Colts fan. I watch him every single week. I know how good this Colts defense is, especially with Darius Leonard in. So yeah, you may just have to sit Kenny Galladay. I've been debating it in my head the last couple of days I still don't know what I'm gonna do here so I know it's hard it's questionable but listen to Hefe go over the stats look it over go with your gut if you have to it's a tough decision but one last damning stat to the gall day thing is that Xavier Rhodes after a rough 2019 he is currently leading the NFL all corners with allowing, I believe it's 43 and a half percent completion percentage when thrown at. So, I mean, all roads are closed going that way. And he's probably going to be the one covering Kenny Galladay a lot of the day. So I just don't like it here. All roads are closed. I see what you did there. <laughs> well, there you have it. I guess I'm sitting Kenny Galladay. Thanks, Hefe. <laughs> no, but that's why they call him the guru. The dude knows what he's talking about. He lives and breathes football. So, all right, anything else you got to throw out here before we get out? Uh, yeah, yeah. I just want to go over a couple of the starters. We've already talked about uh, Scotty Miller and Cole Beasley and, and Rashard Higgins, Brandon Ayuk. Those are guys that I don't only want to pick up this week on, on waivers. They're guys that I'm absolutely playing this week, at least as a flex option. Um, and also the, the Richard Rodgers, another guy that I want to start this week. Um, and if you're looking for tight ends, we have Arizona on a bye, Jacksonville, Houston, Washington. Not not a whole lot of tight ends to replace there, right? Um, but if you need one, Eric Ebron should have a good week and Hayden Hurst should have a good week. Noted. All right, so be on the lookout for Hefe's Week 8 Power Rankings. Uh, they come out tomorrow, and you can check that out on our Facebook Twitter page, at Horseman Sports. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think about your favorite team's ranking. Have a likes to debate it, give give you his reasoning, all that fun stuff. Uh, also help us out, reach 1,000 YouTube subscribers, and have a chance of winning an authentic NFL jersey from the NFL shop on us. If you're watching this, hit that subscribe button, then hit that little bell icon so you never miss an episode or miss your chance at a jersey giveaway. If you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, head on over to YouTube, help us out. We really appreciate the support. And it's not too late to go head-to-head -head with us in the weekly pick'em battle, hop on our Facebook Twitter page at Horseman Sports, where you can find the link to join our free Pigskin Pick'em League and win a prize. Maybe get on the air with us, represent your team. Uh, anything else you got to say, Jeff? Uh, no, you pretty much covered it all, man. Just uh, you know, good luck to everybody this week, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, this season's winding down quickly. We're in week eight already. Fantasy season ends in week thirteen. So we're more yeah, than halfway yeah. there. We waited so long for the season to start. We're already halfway through it. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So, all right. Well, that's all we got for you guys today. We'll be back Thursday with Brad for our week eight picks and preview show. We'll see you then. And thanks for listening.